Greetings Lucky Legends, welcome to the dojo. My name is Lucky, this is Lucky Lad TV. I'm your host of this video and it's time for our week three OBC team builder against my boy J Specs and the Hamden Hydreigons. Now, for some reason, <laughs> no matter what league it is, J Specs and I always have like perfect matchups for each other. Like nobody has a clear advantage at all. J Specs team is actually really, really scary and I'm going to move that over here. J-Specs team is Megalopunny, Jirachi, Togekiss, Alamomola, Arcanine, Curum, Jolteon, Excelgore, Spiritomb, Vileplume, Sandslash, and Regirock. Now, pretty big ground weakness and rock weakness for each of those, but one of the things that you'll see is that he has the Serene Grace core of Jirachi Togekiss, which is not fun. And then, of course, he has Megalopony, which is one of the best, if not the best, Mega in the League format. And it's it's so deadly, for obvious reasons. It's pretty much unwallable. Unless you just have something that's crazy physically defensive, that also has a good, a good tight matchup. So there's really not that many good options for it. So rather than trying to wall the low pony, I'm gonna try and wear it down with spikes. And the way that we're doing that is with Preus here. Preus, our Greninja with spikes, acrobatics, rock tomb, and protect. Now, in my opinion, J Specs only has two potential leads for his team. He could lead off with the Excelgore, or he could lead off with the Megalopony. If he leads off with the Excelgore, we get off a Rock Tomb against it, which it does around 50%, but the important part is that it lowers Excelgore's speed by one stage, which means that we will outspeed it the following turn. And if he brings us down to our Focus Sash, we consume that, acrobatics power doubles, and we easily take that thing out with an acrobatics. Then he can bring in his low pony to try and revenge kill us, which we have protect so that we ignore the fake out. And then, if he is running adamant low pony, we actually do outspeed it. Adamant low pony hits, I believe, 184 or 187 speed we are at 191 we will outspeed it and we can deal a huge amount of damage with the acrobatics um the four is actually right here in attack we haven't battled yet however i did gen the team and i just fixed a couple small things here and there uh that i didn't notice when i was building but that is our lead 100 percent. there is no other possible lead that i plan on doing Ideally, I would like to get up three layers of spikes because that way his low punny takes 25% every time it comes in, which helps a huge amount with preventing that thing from just coming in and fake out damaging everything on my team. So that's kind of the plan there. As far as getting rid of hazards on our own side of the field, I do need some defensive presence and I definitely need rapid spin because he does have the potential for spike stacking I don't mind stealth rocks that much on my team how I mean on my side of the field however spike stacking could be an issue because everything on our team is grounded except for Landorus and our haunter and both of those Pokemon lose to Low Punny. So, granted, pretty much everything on my team loses to Low Punny. But an Adamant Return does a maximum of 80% to Starmie here, which is a problem. Which is why we're kind of set up like this. I want to be able to recover up against pretty much anything on his team. 
And that's important because I don't want to get just blown back by the stuff on his team. Scald is really just there for utility. I... Oh, sorry. I changed this to protect. I changed this to protect to deal with the low punny so that we could, you know, stall it out a little bit. Oh, but then I changed it back. No, I did have Scald. I changed it back to Scald. I was trying to go with protect so that we could avoid fake out into return killing us from full however if we did that it's it's just not as good of a plan i don't think psy shot kills low punny from full uh, i would be surprised if it does uninvested we don't have analytic either So I kind of just went with this set. It's a pretty, it's a very standard set. It's the standard uh, bulky spinner set um, with two attacks rather than like uh, reflect type or something like that. This thing also does beat the sand slash. I want to make sure that my hazards stay on my opponent's side of the field. So I brought Grimace. I brought Grimace here. It blocks the Sand Slash from spinning, and Sand Slash cannot Earthquake us. And granted, yes, Sand Slash gets knockoff. However, um, Energy Ball does a huge amount of Sand Slash, and we can also Will-O-Wisp that thing to burn it. A combination of Will-O-Wisp and Hex will take out pretty much anything on his team. We are slower than Jirachi, which is unfortunate. Otherwise, I would Will-O-Wisp Hex that thing to death. We're also slower than uh, the Arcanine, I believe. There's Arcanine, or do we speed? No, I think we speed tie with Arcanine. Uh, we also speed tie with Curum. Grimace with that 95 speed, it's good, but it's not great. That's the problem. But we're bringing basically the same set we brought against Sketchy Smear Goal. It got rid of the Skarmory in that match, which was really important for us. But basically, my game plan is... It's a little odd, but it should we should be able to execute it. If we play... If I play carefully and play right, we should be able to execute it. Which is... Get up some spikes... Get rid of the Jirachi and the Regirock. And then set up with Porygon Z and sweep. I'll go over that in just a second. First things first, I do want to go over Landorus. I am bringing a Choice Scarf Landorus. I probably won't be bringing Choice Scarf that often. Just because Landorus is a really good pivot. But having to U-turn all the time in order to pivot is kind of annoying not being able to just fire off an earthquake or two superpower hits the low pony it hits the curum and that's really all that i needed to hit um earthquake hits pretty much everything else rock slide hits the togekiss i didn't want to risk missing a stone edge against that thing and u-turn is there for momentum j specs is a very careful battler so he does, he switches, I'm not going to say he switches a lot, because that is a negative connotation. But he doesn't leave things in with the potential to die. Which is why I have U-turn on there, because we can get a nice safe U-turn off on a lot of things on his team. Nothing really punishes me for going for U-turn. So that's kind of what that is. Now, Scorpion. Scorpion, Scorpion, Scorpion. <laughs> this set that I'm about to show you is absolute flames. Flame charge, workout, fire blast, focus blast. I know. I need you to relax. Um, the EV spread is a little bit different. I am um, like this. And let me explain why. Flame Charge Workup would get me to plus one speed, attack, and special attack. 
Now you're probably wondering why would you bother getting up to plus one attack? What's the point? Well, here's the thing. If he brings a Choice Scarf Jolteon, a Choice Scarf Excelgor, or Sandrush Sandslash, no, not Sandrush Sandslash. We would still outspeed that. But if he brings either of those other two things that I just mentioned, we need to be at plus two speed to outspeed them. I don't have agility or rock polish. I have to use flame charge to get my speed up. I have expert belt as well. Flame charge is also good because it hits the Excelgor on the physical side. Granted, fire blast will obviously take care of Excelgor. However, it has the chance to miss, which I would like to avoid if at all possible. Um, it's really only there for the Excelgor is why we have Flame Charge, but that's in terms of damaging things. And the reason we have Work Up rather than Nasty Plot, because granted we are primarily special, is because I would like the Flame Charge to hit a little bit harder in case he brings something like an Assault Vest Jirachi or just a Spideff Jirachi, which does eat up these hits much, much, much better. So we can hit him on the physical side, do a lot more damage. But it's a really silly set. I don't know if it's going to work, but the whole point is to get off a Fire Blast and a Focus Blast against Jirachi and Regirock, respectively, to take them out. Because they're the only two things standing in the way of Porygon Z which is our double dancing Porygon Z with Life Orb, Adaptability, Tri-Attack, and Dark Pulse. The reason I have Dark Pulse is worst case scenario, we aren't able to get rid of Jirachi beforehand, or worst case scenario, we aren't able to get rid of Regirock beforehand. Dark Pulse does a lot more to them. Well, Tri-Attack and Dark Pulse do the same to Regirock because they Adaptability doubles the stab, so this is still 80 against Regirock, but Dark Pulse is super effective against Jirachi, so it will do much more. But Agility Nasty Plot, um, the EV spread. So I just dumped as many EVs into Special Attack as I could, which is all of them. 220 plus, or 220 timid, means that at plus two, after one agility, we outspeed a Choice Scarf Jolteon, which, with the exception of a Choice Scarf Excelgor, is the fastest thing on his team. And nobody runs Choice Scarf Excelgor because it's stupid. Choice Scarf Jolteon, on the other hand, could be a thing, if you really wanted to. Just because it's not, you know, the most logical idea. But at plus two speed, we outspeed absolutely everything on his team except for the potential Choice Scarf Excelgor if he decides to bring that. Try attack at plus two, one shots, everything on his team except for Jirachi and Regirock. Everything else gets absolute, well, plus a layer of spikes to break potential focus sashes, stuff like that. Everything else gets blown the fuck back Unless they have, like, an Assault Vest or whatever the hell the normal-type berry is. There's a berry that reduces the power of normal-type attacks. Um, I'm trying to... I, wa I want to remember what it's called, because... I, I didn't think they would have it, but it does exist. And it's going to bother me if I don't find it and tell you what it is. Um... Let's see. Tanga Berry, no. Walk on, no. Yachi, no. So I'm, I must have run past it. No, no. It's not Babiri. Babiri is steel. Shardy is rock. Ah, the Chilon Berry. Or Chilon Berry. It has damage taken from a normal type attack. If he wants to put a Chilon Berry on something on his team, it might take the plus two try attack or he of course does have Regirock he does have Jirachi he does have the potential to assault vest something 
Maybe like an Alan Mamola could take it with an assault vest. Um, however, if I do see Alan Mamola come in against this thing, I will assume that it is assault vest mirror coat, and I will nasty plot up against that thing to make sure that we one shot it. Um, assault vest Togekiss could probably take one because a Togekiss has great natural bulk to it. Um, but Togekiss can't really do that much back to us if it is assault vest. So I would probably just attack that thing straight off the bat. Although it does get Aura Sphere, which could be a potential problem. Other than that, nothing really wants to take it. Spear Tomb will go down to the Dark Pulse um, at plus two, I believe. Um, I know it goes down at plus four. Um, Spear Tomb is another example of a Pokemon that nothing on our team can really just take it out. Because our fairy coverage on our team is Aromatisse, which is not offensive. Unless you bring, like, the Calm Mindset. Which, I probably will at some point. I haven't had the chance to bring it yet, but again, this is just week three. But that is our team. I'm really hoping for the Porygon Z-Sweep. I really, really am. That would be absolutely epic, but that's going to be it. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. It's very much greatly appreciated. But with that, I'm going to get about best footage out there. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.